1996, Olympia's Capital High School won the Washington 3A championship with a win over West Valley of Yakima. Now the Cougars are in the championship game for the second time in three years with one of the state's most explosive offenses, averaging better than 41 points a game and a tough defense. Tonight, they'll take on Everett's Mariner High School. Two-way star Teo Johnson leads the Marauders into the championship where they hope to vault to the top. The Cougars and the Marauders come your way next. more than 20 years ago as an experiment to get all of the state's high school championship games in one place. It's now evolved into a two-night festival. Tonight's opening night of the WIAA Dairy Farmers of Washington Gridiron Classic and in the 3A championship game, Olympia's Capital High School faces Mariner High School of Everett. Hi, everybody. I'm Todd Pickett. We welcome you to the Tacoma Dome. An interesting matchup between these two teams. A couple of very talented squads, a lot of explosive offensive actions, some good defenses as well. And when you talk offense for these two teams, you start with the rushing game. Both schools prefer to move the ball on the ground. That's been their key to success this season. Capital High School averaging better than 260 yards a game rushing. Mariner not too far behind at just under 225. Chuck Nelson, our analyst again this year for the Gridiron Classic. Chuck, both these teams with good defenses as well. We're going to have an interesting matchup in this 3A game. Well, one of the differences between these two teams is Capital really uses the run to set up the pass, and they make big plays through the passing game. It's really a classic high school matchup. Capital, a team, a team really of overachievers, no real stars, run the classic high school wing tee offense. Mariner, they've got some studs, a big, fast, strong football team, a classic high school match. And as Capital uh, runs the ball very well, they do set up the pass, and they have a very efficient passer in their quarterback, Tabor Lee. Tabor Lee, a senior, as you said, very efficient 64 percent completion rate and they're capable of making very big plays particularly to their outside outside man Skyler Fulton you see the numbers from that semifinal game they only threw the ball 12 times got three touchdowns and over 200 yards out of only those 12 throws and Wayne Sortoon the head coach would be very happy with a 75 percent completion rate once again meanwhile for Mariner they have their best athletes on the field almost all the time that means Teo Johnson not only is a good quarterback he's also an outstanding defensive player Chuck well he's one of the best athletes athletes not only at Mariner High School but but in the state he makes big plays on defense and you see here when he has to he can make big plays on offense Mariner is a team of outstanding athletes they have four running backs between 450 and 700 yards on the season so Teo Johnson doesn't have to throw the ball to make big plays he distributes it to some other guys that are capable of doing just that and he also has the ability should things break down he's able to create things on the run a very talented athlete in Teo Johnson fans continuing to file in players are warming up getting things ready Ready. Our 3A championship game just moments away. Amon Gordon of Mariner, another big guy to bring down in the backfield at better than 6'4", a top rusher for them. He'll be on the ball for the Marauders. Meanwhile, Jake Carlisle, a sophomore who started just four weeks ago, ran wild against Moses Lake. Can he do the same again tonight? Stay tuned. We're coming back right after this. Fox Sports Northwest presents the WIAA Dairy Farmers of Washington Gridiron Classic. Tonight's Class 3A championship game is brought to you by Car Toys, a better way to go for car stereos, car alarms, radar, pagers, and cell phones. By the Money Tree, your cash solution. And by Emerald Queen Casino, where winners go to play. Fans on hand, the teams are out on the field. We're just about ready to kick things off. Mariner in the blue uniforms with yellow trim. Capital in the whites with red trim. Capital winning the toss. They're set to receive quickly before the kickoff. Let's go down to Tom Glasgow. Tied a bittersweet evening for Mariner linebacker Guy Paleo. He broke his collarbone in last week's semifinal, so he'll be an interested spectator, but unfortunately not a participant tonight. Now, as far as the capital offense is concerned, head coach Wayne Sortoon told me, we're not doing anything different. We have versatility, and we're going to use that to the best of our ability tonight. Thank you, Tom. Not only is Paleo a talented linebacker, he's another top rusher. In fact, broke the collarbone on a running play in the fourth quarter of the game. He gets them the tough yards, but they get Martavius Burkhalter back. The opening kick going to Casey O'Connor. 
Capital with great return teams on both punts and kickoffs, and O'Connor takes it out to the 35-yard line. Skyler Fulton is the most dangerous guy, but all these guys have tremendous yardage. 28-yard return for O'Connor, and we see senior quarterback Tabor Lee, who has signed a letter of intent to play baseball next year at San Diego State. His numbers for the season, as we said, Chuck, earlier, at 65% completion rate, he is efficient. Oh, and you like that touchdown-to-interception ratio. He doesn't make mistakes. Fulton gets the carry on first down, tried to get outside, sprung out very well by Shane Keck, the linebacker. He never let Fulton beat him to the corner. The starting lineup the rest of the way for Capital. The Cougars in the white jerseys again, 11-1 overall. Luka Vitalich, Mac Tagman, Tommy Trouse, Nick Bellis, Eli Skillman across the front. Bellis is an All-State 3A lineman. Jared Trigg, Jake Carlisle, Fulton, the most dangerous man. Kevin Mondo, the split end, and Dan Kane is the tight end. This pass complete for a first down to Kevin Mondo, who's only had 14 receptions for the year. Defensive lineup now for Mariner, and Mariner had nine all-league first-team defensive selections this year. Kelly Fee, Josh Catway, Richie Ross, Teo Johnson across the front. Harold Burkhalter, Gordon, and Keck in a 4-4-3 alignment. Salmon, Washington, and Collins. First down, another quick snap in the carry by Jake Carlisle. Chuck this quick offensive attack, what Wayne Sortoon calls a racehorse offense to try to stop Mariner from shifting. Well, Mariner's got big people in the middle and speed on the outside, and they do adjust their lineup according to formation, particularly Teo Johnson. He plays weak end, so he's going to line up opposite the tight end. He's going to make big plays from there. Wayne Sartoon's trying to eliminate Teo Johnson a little bit by forcing him to stay on one side or the other. And no, that number was not wrong for Jake Carlisle. He averages better than 11-1. It is a fourth down and three, not a first down. Bad snap, fielded nicely by Brian Reed, an excellent kicker. His return, Martavius Burkhalder taking it. He has stopped just over the 25-yard line. Tackle made there by Skyler Fulton, the first man down for Capital. And Mariner will have the ball, a 39-yard punt by Brian Reed, who averages a little over 32 per kick. A look again at Skyler Fulton, a dangerous two-way player for Capital. He had run a couple of punts back this season, 16 touchdowns. Also does a great job now from his free safety position. He's going to have to face a very good quarterback. Johnson, you see nine touchdowns to six interceptions. But again, when there's pressure, he can make it happen. Whistle before the snap looked to be some motion on Mariner. Obviously, emotions in this game are running high. These teams started preparing literally as soon as last season was over for just a game like this. For most of these players, it's the last football game they will ever play. Certainly the biggest football game that more than likely they will ever play. A memory for a lifetime. Five yards walked off against Mariner across the front. Fee, Bremeyer, Perez, Miller, and Catway. Gordon, Burkhalder, and Washington. Three running backs. Salmon, watch for Shane Keck there as well, and Anthony Portillo at the tight end position. I think the key there, Todd, is the size of those offensive linemen. Four of the five guys are 240 pounds or more. They average 242 pounds. They've got 50 pounds of man over Capitals' defensive front. And they may have it in the backfield as well. A toss here to Martavius Burkhalder. Young man sprained the knee a few weeks ago, then came back. He is a very quick running back. Jared Trigg making the tackle for Capital. The Cougars with a 4-3 alignment. Ingman, Bellis, Kane, and Trigg across the front. Lee in view, the leading tackler amongst Capitals defenders with Mondo and Tagman. Barber, Oust, Fulton, and O'Connor. That defensive secondary with the 11 interceptions. Wayne Sortoon on the Capitals sidelines. The head coach in his 12th year. Gordon, big hole, first down and more. Nice open field tackle. Scott Barber making the play, but again, at 6'4", 238, that's a truck running at you all night. Well, we've talked about the size of the offensive line. The size of this offensive backfield also has a 20-pound advantage over the Capitals front, and you can see the holes that are open. Amon Gordon transferred up from Oak Harbor, where he, down from Oak Harbor, where he was as a freshman. 238-pound junior fullback. He's averaging over six yards per carry. Speed, size, a big back that can get it done. Scariest word in that whole package, junior. That's right, he's back again. Reverse, Washington. 
Good job. Capital stays home and in their lanes defensively, Chuck. Skylar Fulton on the tackle, and we saw them stay base right there. They try to run some misdirection, and nobody got misdirected. Skylar Fulton is a tremendous athlete there. He's shown that he's a smart athlete as well. He tried to just fake the dive inside to Martavius Burkhalter and get the guy to a legitimate 4-5 speed guy, Darius Washington, around the outside, but, but there is no outside to get around. So both teams' defensive units doing a good job of containment. And Johnson, the quarterback, is back to punt. Whistle again before they can snap that ball. We have, a play. We have the Mariner coaching staff up above us, a very animated coaching staff as they were a week ago in the semifinals. This is a big game. We talked about how big for the players, or the coaches, too, during John the week. John in his fifth year as the head coach at Mariner, and there is his quarterback, 6'7", 228. Big advantage at this level, Chuck. He's just able to see over everybody else. Well, he's, he's, he's bigger than most guys. He's faster than most guys. He's got a lot of advantages. Fuller, Fulton, rather, is back deep. He averages better than 20 yards a return on punts fumbles this one momentarily and is not going to get a whole lot of running room unless he's able to break outside breaks a couple more tackles and turns nothing into something finally will be dropped over the 35 yard line there's a little bit of the ability the young man has chuck 46 yard punt 19 yard return we watch fulton get some field position for the cougars four minutes gone on the opening quarter no score between capital and Mariner. Wayne Sortoon's team won the championship two years ago. He says it's been even more fun getting to the finals this year. Capital at 11 and 1. They're only lost to 4A Olympia in the playoffs. Wins over Eastside Catholic, Renton, and last week a lot of offense in the victory over Moses Lake as they won that one by 21. In a middle drive and stopped by the front part of the Mariner defensive line, Jared Trigg, the ball carrier, and Ramon Gordon leading the tacklers that time for Mariner, Chuck. Well, we talked about Carlisle outside, Skyler Fulton outside, but Jared Trigg is the guy that's got the yards in the running game for Capital. 1,252 yards through 12 football games, almost seven yards a carry. This wing T offense, a good fullback, really sets up that outside stuff. Spinning move that time by Trigg, and he picks up additional yardage with that. Tackle made by Washington, takes it out over the 40-yard line. We talked about not to be redundant, but the size of Mariner on offense. Well, those same guys, for the most part, are playing on defense. Capitals offensive line has one guy over 208 pounds, that being Eli Skillman at 250. But Mariner's front, 250, 240, 220, and 230. Third and long, Lee under pressure, gets away from Johnson, who leads the team in sacks, and completes it into Mariner territory. Dan Kane, the tight end at 6'4", 205 with the grab. Darius Washington on the tackle for Mariner, and the first play out of a little bit of a scramble goes Tabor Lee's way. Now you see the athleticism of Tabor Lee. That's how you get a baseball scholarship, too, is the chance to make some things happen and the chance to be an athlete. Theo Johnson puts on the heat. Going to the tight end downfield is not unusual for Capital. Their tight end is their number two receiver, and he averages over 13 yards a catch. Dan Kane, a senior that can make things happen. Cougars with the first down in Mariner territory. Trigg once again. Only got a couple of yards before he is slammed back. Johnson there with a little bit of uh, extra emphasis on the tackle. Make no mistake about it, this is a Mariner team that wants to win very, very badly. They are a very veteran group. They more than likely won't get here next year. They start nine seniors on this defense and eight on offense. They know that this is probably their only shot. Call it a gain of a yard on that play for Trigg. Now Carlisle, interesting story with this young man. He's perhaps the fastest of their backs, and you see why in the open field. Johnson at 6'7", hauls him down from behind just outside the 10-yard line. Chuck, this young man was a reserve until Jesse Ost sprained an ankle. He got into the lineup, and Wayne Sortoon says, hey, Blake, so well, we couldn't take him back out. Yeah, 645 yards on the year in very limited playing time. He's only played the last half of the year, only started in four games coming.
coming in here. You can see the quickness right there on the cutback. Darius Washington, one of the best athletes around, just gets dusted. Carlisle opens the speed. You also see the tenacity of Teo Johnson. He taped that play all the way down the field. Lee looking in the end zone for Fulton. Touchdown, Capital. The Cougars strike first, a couple of big plays. Talked about their ability to make big plays through the air that the running game sets up. The play fake to Jarek Trigg, and then Fulton gets behind the Mariner defense and a good throw from Tabor Lee, 16th touchdown of the season for the senior quarterback. Cougars went for two while we were in the replay. They lined up with the old swinging gate Mariner did not adjust, and Capital took it in on the running play for the two-point conversion to make it 8-0 in favor of Capital. 5.35 to play in the first quarter. Lee's touchdown pass to Fulton as the Cougars on the board. Welcome back to Tacoma. Capital on the board, 8-0 in favor of the Cougars. Brian Reed getting set to kick off. Martavius Burkhalter, Darius Washington, and Michael Collins back deep for Mariner. Rather short kick, Burkhalter at the 11. Slides through one hole, gets out near the 30-yard line. Ball loose. Capital has it, it looks like. Still no signal from the officials, although Capital is signaling they have the ball. And the Cougars now think they do. The officials agree. Our crew tonight, Rick Myers from the Snohomish Officials Association, Jerry Meyerhoff of Western Washington, Larry Fox, Tri-Cities, Dick Terry Peninsula, and Stu Gorski from Whatcom. Here's the play again. Yeah, Burkhalter trying to make something happen, got upfield, and then a very good job Looks like Casey O'Connor to strip the ball out. Jake Carlisle alertly falls on it. John Andrzak, Mariners head coach, spent extra time on special teams in practice this week. He thought special teams was going to be a big part of the outcome of this football game, special teams and turnovers. Fulton on a little inside counter. Breaks off one tackle. Wow, did he get collared there by Burkhalder and a late flag. And he got a face mask over there. Maybe a little frustration there early on that stop. Good job on initially on the defense. Shane Keck stayed home. See the frustration from John Andrzejewski. You had penalty on turnover, and all of a sudden you're on your own goal line. And one of the things that they've stressed all year long is discipline, not taking penalties like these. You see Burkhalter gets the grab, tries to go high. When you go high, that's a risk you take. You also get a good look at the high-stepping ability of Skyler Fulton. Tabor Lee there in the foreground, the capital quarterback we've mentioned is going on a baseball scholarship. If the name Lee and baseball rings a bell for you, yes, he is the younger brother of Arizona Diamondbacks player Travis Lee. Tabor's already done a little bit better in football, though. Travis was the quarterback in 91. They lost in the first round to O'Day. We have a timeout called by Mariner with 516. Good move here, perhaps, by John Underzak to settle his troops down. Capital up and driving. Back in Tacoma, Capital with the football with a first down at the 18-yard line following the penalty. Here again is uh, Tabor Lee, as we said. He's outdone brother, and brother here in attendance tonight. Inside the trig, trips over one of his linemen pulling that time and gets just a couple of yards on the play. Jared Trigg with 102 run yards rushing last week in the semis against Moses Lake. Very good offensive game, obviously, when you score that many points. Capital putting up 49. You're going to have a lot of guys with a lot of yards. There's the numbers, not only impressive offensively at 41.5 per game, but defensively at under 12 a game. Fulton the motion man, little option action. Lee trying to turn the corner, and a wall of blue. Johnson was there first to slow him down. Ross there to hit him along with Bremeyer. 
this wing tee offense there's so many things you can do out of it you get lots of misdirection play action see Fulton comes in motion becomes the pitch man and it's up to the quarterback to make the read a very good job by cornerback Michael Collins of staying on the outside defensing the option is assignment defense if that option's coming you can't all attack the ball you got to know who's supposed to stay on the pitch man who's supposed to stay on the quarterback good job there on Mariner of fulfilling their assignment that's a great point it requires a lot of discipline by the kids to stay home and stay with the assignments Lee looking to throw back opposite side touchdown capital Dan Kane with the catch and score. And there's the misdirection in the passing game. Kane just sneaks out the left side. David Lee rolls right. All the receivers downfield except for Kane flow across with your quarterback. Good decision by the senior to go against the grain and go back to the other senior. Look, everybody flowing this way except Dan Kane. Kane matched up on Anthony Portillo. Gets a couple of steps. Capital through the air has put a couple up. Mariner stepped out and defended the conversion this time, so Reed will now go into kicking formation. Lee is the holder. Reed with a school record 53 point after touchdowns this year. Adds the point after to make it 15 to nothing now in favor of Capital. Chuck, this is kind of reminiscent of what the Cougars were able to do in the semifinals against Moses Lake last week. They put up two touchdowns in the first six minutes of that football game and then hung on with a couple of late Moses Lake touchdowns. But you can see Lee looking back the whole time. He knew where this play was designed to go. They executed it well. A good, strong throw again. Very efficient job by quarterback David Lee. What did you see on that play that influenced the defense so much? You get all the flow going across. And first you get a little play action so you get Portillo holding up a little bit at the line of scrimmage and everybody flows away. Dan Kane is the only guy that knows where he's going. He sneaks out. Portillo has to play run first and then notice his flow away. Leaves that back left corner of the end zone wide open. Kane's the only man inside. You saw John Underzak talking with his quarterback, Teo Johnson, the scoring drive for Capital. They came back a week ago in their semifinal victory over Linden. Had to come from behind and had to hold off Linden down the stretch. So this team knows adversity. Well, and they, they know how to rally. Well, they have the confidence and they know they have the athletes to make things happen. You don't have to have a five-minute drive for Mariner to score. They're capable of going the distance virtually any one of their offensive players. Brian Reed set to kick off once again. Burke Holder, the deep man of the trio for Mariner. Lower line drive kick this time. Burke Holder inside the 10. Hangs onto the ball as he's brought down at the 28-yard line. So time now for Mariner to rally just a little bit. Prior to tonight's game, we talked with Mariner coach John Andruzek about the disciplined approach his team has taken this year. We felt last year that we did lose uh, the first round of the state playoffs because we made some mistakes. And so this year we, we said that we were going to go out and we were going to be a disciplined football team. We felt like we had some great athletes, uh, but we needed to just eliminate mistakes, eliminate turnovers, penalties. Uh, and, and the discipline was not only on the field, but it was the discipline to, to get up in the morning and lift weights and the discipline to get yourself out of bed and get to practice on time. And, you know, these kids responded. I'm on Gordon carrying for seven on first down. It's going to be interesting, though, Chuck. They had a couple of the early penalties prior to the snap, then the turnover. So it'll be interesting to see how they rally back from those early setbacks. Well, this is where you rely on the confidence. This is where you rely on leadership. Teo Johnson has been in big basketball games. He's been in lots of playoff games. They were just in basketball. He's got to rally his troops. Good surge by Capital that time, wrapping up Darius Washington close to the line of scrimmage, if not behind. Shooting through is Nick Bellis. We mentioned an all-state performer. 6'3", 205 is not the biggest player in the offensive and defensive lines for Capital, but he probably is their best player. 6'3", 205, a very good athlete. This is a very disciplined defense. They shoot the gaps very well. Their quickness may be their hope against the bulk of Mariner. Need to get out over the 38 for the first down. Gordon will do that off the right side. Spins for a couple more before he's finally swarmed under. 
Lee and Vu leading the tacklers for capital that time, but Gordon able to pick up first down yardage and Chuck, a guy that size, you figure he's good for three or four no matter what every time you send him through the line. Well, you send him through the line behind 240-pound Josh Catway, the right tackle, and Maury Miller, the 270-pound guard. You just get a little bit of inertia going and you get about 850 pounds worth of falling forward. Washington carrying this time in a double wing set. Cuts it back and picks up some nice yardage. Luka Vitalich, the first man to make the tackle for Capital that time. Mariner at 10 and 2, winning the Wesco for the second year in a row. Beat Stanwood in the first round of playoffs 32-0, then Olympia 31-7. A controversial win over Kennedy 13-12, and then the come from behind win in the semis over Linden to advance to the championship game for the first time. And just like Capital, their only two losses were to upper division schools. They lost to Kamiak and Cascade, two 4A schools. As I mentioned earlier in the week, uh, they've really sort of benefited from what we call the downsizing, going down to the 3A where they didn't battle some of those big 4A powerhouses in their area anymore. Well, it's a big school. They're actually going to go back to 4A next year. They've got 700, 1,700 students at Mariner High School. The district really got split three or four years ago when Kamiak High School opened, took some of the athletes. Some of them came back. Darius Washington went to Kamiak, came back to Mariner. They're just recovering from the Kamiak factor. Obviously, they're recovering very well. Third and short, Gordon gets plenty, takes it all the way down to the capital 40-yard line. Skyler Fulton, Casey O'Connor on the stop for Capital. You get that big load going, and it's just kind of hard to bring it down. Skyler Fulton, 175 pounds. Amon Gordon, 238. Nigel Burton, the outstanding strong safety for the Huskies, says he's got a 70-pound roll. He's about a 180-pounder. He says if the guy's 69 pounds or less than weighing more than I am, I'm going to take him low. 70 pounds or more. Well, I'll, I've got it backwards. He takes them low if they're big guys, high if they're little guys. We'll work on it. <laughs> like I said, Nigel Burton. <laughs> Burkholder with the carry for no yardage that time. Gordon, by the way, five carries with 34 yards already. He really spread the ball around in this running game. Darius Washington, 65 carries. Amon Gordon, 84 carries. Burkhalter. 102 carries. Everybody's going to see the ball. Washington, the motion man. First passing attempt of the game for Aaron. Looking deep for Washington. It's out of bounds. O'Connor is there covering well for Capital. Washington was trying to get a pass interference call, and there's no way it was going to happen. There's no way the ball was going to get caught either. Good coverage by O'Connor. He had a couple of steps that time on Darius Washington. Good protection from the big guys. He said first pass of the game. Kind of a surprise to everybody but O'Connor. Ball out of bounds. And O'Connor probably in better position than Washington to make a play on it. Should it have been in bounds. Taylor Johnson can throw it a long way. They just don't have to throw it very often. He's only a 47% completion guy. Only 71 yards per game average through the air. Trying to throw again. A little screen set up nicely for Burkholder. Actually outran his blockers that time. Gets the first down and more. O'Connor will lap him up inside the, well, they'll mark it at the 11. But a big gain there, 30 yards to the 11 for Mariner. Teo Johnson, give him some credit, Chuck. He really held the ball, held the ball, and held it well to set up that game down to the 11. That will bring our first quarter to an end. Capital with two touchdown passes by Tabor Lee has a 15-0 lead over Mariner at the end of one quarter. Back to the second quarter, the opening play, Amon Gordon taking the ball down to the five-yard line. Mariner trying to get on the board after giving up a couple scores in the first quarter of play. Give Gordon credit for another six yards, taking him to 40 so far. He averages better than six per carry. Numbers in the first half, total yards pretty even between the two teams. The turnover a bit costly, allowing Capital to get the second touchdown from the five. Burkhalder for about a yard. 
First stop there by Luka Vitalic. Skylar Fulton also in on the tackle. Again, those short yardage situation, and it's often low man wins, and that time Skylar Fulton from the backfield came through low and got to the ankles. He's a big, big, big play player. Four interceptions on defense. A couple of punt returns for a touchdown. Took one of those interceptions back for a touchdown. In the Tacoma Dome, this is our first night of two. The 3A championship game between Mariner and Capital. Third down now for Mariner. They can get a first down at the one. Gordon with the corner. He's going to run him over into the end zone. Touchdown, Mariner. You Amon get, Gordon. You get that big man wide and get that head of steam coming up. You're going to take more than one guy to bring him down. Nice job there by Darius Washington of clearing the path for Amon Gordon, giving him a chance to get that big ball rolling down the hill. Look at the forward lean for a big man once he sees that goal line right here. And at 195, Jesse Oss has given up 35, 40 pounds to a guy with a big head of steam. That locomotive heads down the track. Isaac Woldite on to attempt the point after. It is good. Makes it 15-7 in favor of Capital. Amon Gordon right there picking up his ninth rushing touchdown. And Chuck, you get him out there in the open field where he's one-on-one. -on -one. He has the speed, but more importantly at this level, the power to get by these guys. Well, when you get that momentum going, you see Washington in motion on the outside. Gets the first shot on Austin. Gets him backing up a little bit, so Austin doesn't get any motion. You see that it's the players right there for capital that end up on their back and Amon Gordon that ends up in the end zone. Gordon's four yard run taking him to 45 yards rushing so far in the game and a nice drive over five minutes for the Marauders. Well that answers first question about how they'd respond to giving up the two touchdowns. Well it's a team that early in the season struggled with turnovers and as the year's gone on they've learned to control that a little bit. You can see that they have the ability to grind out drives if they have to. They're not their own worst enemy. If they don't give the ball up via turnovers or hurt themselves with penalties, it's tough for the other guys to stop them 10 or 12 plays in a row. And the other thing to keep in mind with the tally so far, Capitals 15 points in the first quarter, actually the first few minutes, are more than Mariner gives up on a per game average. So that had to rattle them a little bit. This is a defense that has played very well. They shut out their three last conference opponents. In a six-game stretch late in the season, going into last week's semis, they only gave up an average of five points per game. They gave up 26 last week to Linden. A look at Skylar Fulton there. He averages onside kick attempt, flag thrown as well. The flag try. was thrown from the spot of the kick. I have a feeling somebody was offside. He has that look of an offside, but... Woldai right there, all he's trying to do is get the ball on the ground and disrupt Capitals' return scheme and really accidentally Blue. the ball hit Andrew Popple in the front line, number 54, and came back to Mariner. But now you get those offside penalties on a kickoff. That's tough enough, but man, to give up a turnover that way. There again, Skyler Fulton back deep, we mentioned, averaging better than 37 yards per kickoff return. Here's some of the things that he's done this season. Yeah, 16 touchdowns. You can see lots of different ways to do it, too. Does everything for this team, special teams, offense. 37 per kickoff return with a touchdown. 20 and a half per punt return with a touchdown. He'll try it again, Woldite's low line drive. When the up men touched it, then Barber pulls it in. He's pretty dangerous as well. Takes it out over the 35-yard line before he's brought down by Curtis Ingram, and Capital will have the ball there. Quick reminder, coming up after tonight's championship game, Fox Sports News primetime at 10 o'clock or thereabouts. All the highlights of the day's activities in sports. Looking ahead to a busy weekend as well. Some college conference championships on the line. Get the latest Fox Sports News. We are there. Weeknights at 10 right here on Fox Sports Northwest. Jake Carlisle carrying the ball, bounces off a tackler, picks up a couple. Good second effort there, Burkhalder on the stop for Mariner. Mariner defense, big guys up front in the middle. 
and speed and ability on the outside. Amon Gordon, the middle linebacker, does it on both sides of the ball. You got Teo Johnson at weekend, the number one sack guy, and then with Powell, Washington, and Collins, the three secondary people. You got, you're not gonna outrun this Mariner team. Lee intercepted by Shane Keck. Dropped at the 40-yard line by Luca Vitalich. Keck the outside backer and Mariner coming up with a turnover. Keck just dropped back in coverage. And Lee trying to hit the crossing route behind him and Keck dropped deep enough to get into the passing lane. You see the play action holds him for a while, but he does a great job of dropping back. Fulton trying to come across the field behind him. Never gets a chance to make a play on the ball. Keck an outstanding wide receiver on the offensive side. Chuck, Doesn't here's a change. The Johnson, chance. the quarterback, is in the slot. DeAndre Powell is at quarterback, and Johnson at 6'7", going out to the flat. Sack on Powell. He took a while trying to set up. Nick Bellis makes the drop. Yeah, DeAndre Powell started two games at quarterback this year for Mariner. The opener in particular kind of sealed his fate in the opening game against Crosstown rival Kamiak. DeAndre Powell threw six interceptions. And then the change was made. Teo Johnson was a tight end last year. 26 catches his sophomore season. But with the ineffectiveness of Powell in the season opener, they had to come up with a solution. Johnson was the solution. Pretty good solution, too, taken into the championship game. A nice play there by Bellis. A lot of confusion here. Mariner had confusion getting guys in and out of the field on the first play. This is an equipment adjustment this time on Darius Washington. But the uh, Marauders just trying to get things synced up right now. Well, you can see it on the last play with the change at quarterback. Everything kind of got discombobulated a little bit. Powell gets sacked. Who's in? Who's out? The sack on Powell. Drops back. Had some decent protection for a while. But Johnson's out and up route. Took a while to run. Bellis... Clock was running, Bellis got to Powell. Now they got Johnson back in trying to figure out who's where. Burke called it a motion man. Johnson slipping for a minute on the turf and then goes down. Mark Ingman with the defensive effort for Capital. Back-to-back -back sacks for the Cougars. And back-to-back -back reasons for those sacks. Just good coverage downfield. Things taking too long to happen. You see, it's Johnson's athleticism and Ingman's desire that creates the excitement on this play, and it's England's desire just one grade better than the athleticism of Teo Johnson. Well, that's where he is dangerous, is in the open field. England, the number one soccer on the year for Capital. That's four and a half for the season. Third and 24, they have to get to the Capital 30. Nearly intercepted O'Connor, I think, didn't see the ball for a moment. He was trying to find Robbie Salmon, was Johnson, and threw it too high. You see that Johnson certainly has the potential to do good things at the quarterback position, can throw the ball as well as you need a high school quarterback to do it, but feet not real steady, hasn't played quarterback for a real long time, he's got a few things to learn. But he has another year as well, he's another junior for John Andrzejczyk, and talented enough to be the team's kicker as well, Fulton the deep man for capital. With possible returnable kick, but he gets it away from him enough, and good coverage down there by the Marauders. They really sprinted downfield well. They will down the ball just inside the 10-yard line. 45-yard punt. Capitals defense pushing Mariner back after the turnover. A pair of sacks, and the Cougars still with the lead. <laughs> Back at the Tacoma Dome, Capital with two early first quarter scores as a 15-7 lead over Mariner. Teo Johnson coming up back out to the defensive position now. Having trouble making things happen on offense. Nice that numbers there, Chuck, for Tabor Lee. Yeah, I'd say that counts as efficient. He's completed them all, just one of them went to the opponents. Good yardage out to the 15 that time for the Cougars as Trigg carries there. We mentioned Capital in the state championship game for the second time in three years. In 1999.
to six. The Cougars were on this same field. This was their go-ahead score. Charles Kentfield was the player of the game as the Cougars beat West Valley of Yakima 17-7 en route to the championship. Trigg, nice effort there again. He bounced off the initial hit when he looked to be wrapped up by Kelly Fee. Turned it into a gain of a couple of yards. Field position advantage for Mariner here kind of eliminates a few of the options for Capital. They run the ball on their own end, get it to the fullback a couple of times, and with Trigg, they've got a good enough fullback to get a little bit of room, give them some choices. Good job on first and second down, third and short. Coming up. Got a long one, short two here down in their own end. Carlisle for the first down. Good job by big guys out front there, too, making things happen for D Capital. Damian Holman led the tacklers for Mariner, but again, that deception of the wing tee as a defender really causes you to be a little bit hesitant sometimes and make sure you don't over-pursue. Well, so when, we, when we give credit for a guy staying home and not getting fooled by the misdirection and the reverses, you can see Capital 52-37 rushing advantage. The reason that guy's staying home, that's good if it's a reverse, but that's tough if the ball's going away. It's tough to pursue. Fulton on the inside counter. That's one of his bread and butter plays. Shane Keck on the stop for Mariner. You saw those rushing numbers a minute ago. And again, keep in mind, both these teams like to establish the run. Capital at better than 260. Mariner about 225 a game. So both teams are outstanding defensively against the run and right now you'd say that the defenses are winning out in the ground game portion of the battle well mary did a great job a 12 play drive didn't hurt themselves with the field position that capital started this drive at they're going to have to do the same second effort there by kevin mondo will take it to about the 32 yard line you get the ball off your old goal line, get that first down and get out a little bit, then you can throw it. And nice job throwing it right there by Tabor Lee with a big man in his face. Hung in there, threw a strike. Mondo took a couple licks, but got a few yards. Shane Keck closing after he tried to break the original tackle of Salmon. At the 32 again, third and short. You see Mariner trying to scramble around defensively. That's what Capital hopes to achieve get to the line and before Mariner, Mariner can adjust, get a mismatch and go. And they were able to find a seam that time. Well, we talked about low man wins and short yardage too. Take a look at the left guard if you get a chance right here. Left tackle, Luka Vilicic. He started basically on all fours. He says, I'm gonna be the low man if they're coming over here. This is not misdirection. This is not fooling anybody. This is a straight dive. We're gonna get off the ball quick. Try to get them while they're moving, make something happen. And a great lead block as well by Jesse Austin in the hole. Fulton the motion man, flag thrown on the play as Trigg carries up the middle. Looked as though someone turned up field that time for Capital. That is the signal. Illegal motion. Don't forget, tomorrow night, the WIAA 4A championships right here on Fox Sports Northwest. The Pasco Bulldogs taking on Wilson High School of Tacoma. Coverage will begin at 7 o'clock with a special Saturday night edition of Fox Sports Northwest tonight. Then we'll have all the action. Wilson and Pasco at 7.30 right here on Fox Sports Northwest. <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine on that one. You can get the dart to stick on the nose, it's 50 points. Capital again had to start inside the 10. This is Aus, the, one of their more powerful running backs, out to the 35-yard line. Jesse averaged better than 10 and a half yards a carry. Just some phenomenal numbers on per carry average for these guys, Chuck. Well, you've got a fullback that carries the ball a lot and is very effective, over 1,200 yards for Jared Trigg, and then you have halfbacks that are capable of making big plays. Carlisle at over 11 yards per carry, Oust over 10 yards per carry. Oust also a very good receiver out of the backfield. We have a timeout on the field, 4.33 to play in the second quarter. Capital of Olympia leads Mariner of Everett 15-7. Mid-second quarter, Capital leading Mariner by a 15-7 margin. Stay tuned at halftime. 
be featuring more outstanding headgear like that, as well as an interview with the executive director of the WIAA, Mike Colbreeze, a preview of tomorrow night's 4A championship game, and we'll meet this year's Dairy Ambassador. Ball stripped away, bounces Mariner's way, Skylar Fulton. That was Trigg, I think, carrying it and had it stripped away, wasn't it? Was it Fulton? Okay. See, this is, this is the misdirection again. No, you're right, it's Trigg coming back and just the Keck coming through, gets shoulder pad on the football. Trigg tries to get it back. But Ken, this is a Mariner defense that's very good at creating turnovers. Johnson fell on top of it. Geez, one time I got it right. Oh, well. <laughs> At the 35, Gordon for a couple. Bellis was the first guy to hit him. An interesting Capitals, a team that's thrived off of creating turnovers, and now they've coughed it up. Well, turnovers in a high school football game, it's mistakes often that determine who wins and loses the big plays that lead to two mistakes the capital sacks twice in that last drive pushing mariner back after they got the interception and that minus 15 three play drive on the heels of a 12 play five minute plus drive now the officials have called for a timeout and again we have a uh, liam vu of capital having to make an equipment adjustment little helmet work wayne sortoon a former lineman for university of washington 68, 69, and 70. Well, good job coaching football. Inside for Washington, and I'll tell you, he nearly had the handoff taken away by Bellis that time. Nick was in so quickly. He did a great job of penetrating, and when you can get in the backfield, you can make some things happen on any kind of running play, but particularly one that's going to come right back at you. You can see Bellis's quickness that time over Josh Perez. Just hops him, makes things happen. John Andrzejczak looking his team of third and nine, almost a full 10 after that last play. Johnson underneath for Washington, can't hang on. Had a little bit of room, Jesse Oscar's closing on the coverage for Capital. Now Mariner will have to decide what to do. Well, this part of the field more than likely will go for it. Third down conversion, such a big part of football. Keep your offense on the field. The Mariner gave themselves the chance right here to keep the offense on the field with a first down. And Looks Washington. like they're going to send the, the punt team on now, Chuck, and it's not a half bad idea to try to pooch one here and bottle capital up. They've had the field position here earlier with the Special teams play, pinning Capital back. Good job on defense of getting the turnover. Unable to do anything with it, but try to try to keep that field position here. Johnson looking for the corner. Fulton waving for a fair catch. It'll spin and go into the end zone for the touchback. You see the reaction of Teo Johnson. Just got to get a little bit more bite in the wedge there if you're going to try to do that. And it'll be a first and 10 for Capital out at the 20-yard line. John Andrews has been a part of Mariner football for a long, long time. Related to Frank Goddard, who started the football program when the football when the school opened in 1970. Took over as the head man five years ago and has done a very good job. It's a program that had some disarray with the opening of Kamiak across town. Lost a few guys. The population growth in the area has more than supported two schools now. It's a big school and they win a lot of football games. Well, you see the histories again for these two teams. Pitch, nice grab there by Trigg on a bit of a, make that Carlisle rather, 26 on the pitch by Lee. Fox Sports Northwest, your home of high school football action next Saturday. It's the top classification in Oregon. The OSAA 4A championship coming your way at noon right here on Fox Sports Northwest. Wide open attacks in the Oregon playoffs. Those continuing this weekend. No gain on that first play. Lee looking to throw. For Carlisle. The speedy sophomore bounces off. No, he stepped out of bounds just barely at the 42-yard line. A nice touch right there from Tabor Lee, too. Kick had good coverage. But a little bit of loft on the football. 
by Tabor Lee. You can see he carries out the play fake really well, but he kicks in position to make a play if that ball's thrown on the rope. But Lee takes it up and over, and Carlisle with the good catch. Good job of keeping his feet, too. Even he's even trying to figure out where he stepped out there. I thought the two Mariner defenders went out of bounds, but I'm not sure Carlisle went with him. Thank you. Again, the only uh, non-completion was the interception. I haven't had a ball hit the ground yet. <laughs> Looking to throw this time for Fulton. He had single coverage from DeAndre Powell, but that one really did not have a chance from the get-go. Yeah, I think Lee, too, was kind of in a hurry to throw that. He saw big number seven, Teo Johnson, coming from his backside. Got rid of it a little early and got it down there before Fulton had a chance to. It's because he didn't want to wind up on his backside. <laughs> Johnson coming in. You mentioned off the top that Johnson does a lot defensively as well. And again, at 6 7 last week against Linden, just standing up in the passing lane on that corner it was enough to really hamper their offensive attack at times. Well, he made his mark in basketball first, playing varsity basketball as a freshman. Had 22 points in his first varsity basketball game. He's 14 years old. Carlisle gets driven back into the backfield. The initial play by Amon Gordon, he took the blocker clear back into the backfield. The tag man tagged his own man right there. Amon Gordon came through on number 55, Matt Tagman, and had too many bodies in the way back there. Amon Gordon, number one. Martavius Burkhalter, number two. A real one-two punch at the inside linebacker position for Mariner. Capital needing to get it to the 48 of Mariner. Lee floating outside under pressure, gets rid of it, and he got rid of it completely. Threw it away that time, kept it away from any uh, interceptions from Mariner. Scott Barber was the guy out in the flat. Pressure that time for Mariner by Ronnie Harold. There is a flag for a clip against Capital, and I think Mariner will probably decline it and force the punt. I don't know. This is a well, again, yeah, you might take it. penalty and field position-wise. Yeah. You know, even if you decline it, you got a third and 12. You take it, you got third and forever. Mariner coaches are signaling no. They're going to go ahead and take the ball and take the clock time instead with 157. Keep in mind, Mariner has just one timeout Clipping remaining. On white, decline, fourth down. Brian Reed will come on to punt. This time by Reed. Fair catch signaled for by Burkhalder. Muffs it and then runs. He signaled for the fair catch. No well, flag thrown. Well, no officials even blowing the whistle or wow. uh, anything. Kind of uh, making it up as they go along right there. 40 yard plus on the punt once again. And Marauders will have it at the 18 yard line again coming up at halftime. A little less than two minutes of clock time. Mike Colbreeze, the executive director of the WIAA. Tomorrow night, Pasco and Wilson of Tacoma meeting in the 4A game, and we'll meet the WIAA's Derry Ambassador. Let's see if they got the, the moustache on this this year. They slipped up a year ago. Teo Johnson and the Marauders looking to try to cut into this eight-point deficit before halftime. Washington on the counter. Over the 30-yard line. Did the ball pop loose again? No. Good run by Washington that time. Enough for a first down to stop the clock. You've got that only one timeout left. Inside Statue of Liberty right there. Nice little move by Washington on lay in view. Picking up first down yards. Clock will start. Burke Holder carrying. Gets inside, got a little bit of a brush block from Washington into Capitol territory for another first down at the 47. Scott Berber on the tackle. All of a sudden, the Marauder ground game's off and rolling. And when you don't have timeouts, you got to find a way to stop the clock, Todd. So I guess you just get first downs on every play. Especially if you're going to run it. Very quickly at the 47-yard line, they're in new Capitol territory with still a minute 20 to go. Gordon. 
Nice catch in midair. Breaks a couple more tackles. O'Connor finally pushes him down, but not until after another first down and a gain of 12. We got a little energy going here on the blue side. But Gordon pretty quick out of that stance. Gets that low going. Capital reeling a little bit. Gonna They're going to take a timeout. Figure out what they need to do. John Undrzak has his troops going in the right direction. Both coaches kind of taking defensive timeouts here in the first half to settle their troops. Everett Mariner trying to get another score before the break. A little more than a minute to play. Mariner on the move. They've trailed Capital since early in the first quarter. Quick pitch for Burkhalder. Nice brush block by the lineman there. Burkhalder for the first time in about four carries. Won't get a first down, but he did get out of bounds. Good lead blocked that time by Kelly Fee. With those big guys out front in the open field, they like to try to get contact on the little guys, and the quick pitch is just designed to make things happen outside. You see the push from 64 Fee right there on Trigg, keeping him off the play, giving Burkhalder a bit of the corner, gets good yardage, and as you said, Todd, Gets out of bounds to stop the clock. That's five plays in a row that have resulted in big yards and a clock stoppage. Two things Mariner had to accomplish. John Andrzejczak may need to patent this offense. Gordon. Bulls by a couple more. Ball's loose. It belongs to Capital. Yeah, turnovers and big plays are what win and lose games in high school football and the extra effort that time of Amon Gordon kind of spent it breaking tackles and lost sight of the fundamentals what a great run till the end the spin the size and again I don't know how Casey O'Connor got it away from him and fell on it he had it pretty well protected when he went on that initial run it's a nice play by O'Connor going after the football that's the second fumble he's caused here tonight that's a big play just before the half. Inside of a minute, what will Capital do? They'll give it to Trigg initially. He'll pick up a first down. That gives him a little more breathing room. We'll see whether they try to go upstairs or not now. Capital's downfield weapons are... You see Wayne Sortoon telling his team to hurry up, pick it up, and go. Clock starts on the set of the chains, not the snap. No yardage that time for Trigg. Amon Gordon in on the stop for Mariner along with Anthony Portillo. Mm -hmm. so not, not in such a big hurry <laughs> now after getting stuffed on first down. He's going to run, run clock now and just snap it one more time. Amon Gordon making plays, trying to make up for his earlier mistake. Well, another juggle there by Jesse Alston. We may have to check. Maybe we can get the officials put a little more stick them on the ball at halftime here. We've seen running backs juggle it a couple of times. That will close the first half of play. A turnover-filled first half by both teams. Capitals' two first-quarter touchdowns give the Cougars the lead at the break. Touchdown passes for Lee to Fulton and Kane, both coming in the first quarter. Then John Undrzak saw his team move down the field well. The touchdown round by Gordon early in the second quarter capped off our first half scoring. Wayne Sortoon's Capital Cougars lead it by a score of 15 to 7. Going into the locker room at halftime over the Mariner High School Marauders. And as the Marauder marching band files out onto the field, let's go downstairs to Tom Glasgow with Mariner head coach John Undrzak. John, disappointment, I know, on that last drive not to cash it in. Talk about the first half in general, and I know your team was maybe shaken a bit by those early scores. Uh, yeah, we were a little nervous at first, a uh, couple penalties, and, and we just need to hang on to the football. But still, we need to use that last drive, a uh, confidence builder, because our kids really did a good job moving it down, moving the ball down the field. So and we'll, we'll make a few adjustments at half, and they were coming out for another great second half of football. We'll let you get your team. Okay. John, thank you. Todd, back to you. Thank you, Tom. It's halftime at the Tacoma Dome. The WIAA Dairy Farmers of Washington 3A championship game has capital in front of Mariner at halftime. Halftime activities after this. At halftime, Capital of Olympia 15, Mariner of Everett 7, our WIAA 3A championship game. One of two we'll have for you this weekend. 
Mariner having to rally a little bit. Capital getting a couple of early scores as we take a look at the first half highlights and the Cougars getting on the board first. They completed this first drive with a 13-yard touchdown pass lead of Fulton. Well, they did such a great job with the running game early and as they have all season, then made big plays through the passing game. The first one to Fulton, then another nice throw from Tabor Lee coming back to Dan Kane for Capital's second touchdown. 15-0 at the end of one, then a nice drive by Mariner. Gordon with the TD. 12 play drive over five minutes. Get it to your big man. Amon was the man for Mariner in the first half. Fairly even in terms of uh, the total yards between the two teams. A little bit more rushing for Mariner than passing, which we would expect. Maybe a little bit more balance for Capital than we would have expected going in. But the biggest thing is the turnovers. The team's just turning the ball over. Well, and Mariner kind of self-destructed on their one good drive. Capital took advantage of one of the turnovers that they got. Second half comes your way next. <laughs> Just about ready for our second half kickoff. Let's go down with Tom Glasgow with Capital Head Coach Wayne Sortoon. Todd, thanks a lot. Coach, let's talk about a first half. I thought the difference really big plays on, on the part of your team and especially by your defense. Our defense is real tenacious. They're not real big. You know, uh, the Mariners got some real physical kids and, you know, but we're stripping the ball and that's by design. You know, our kids uh, work on that and uh, uh, we're beat up a little bit, but I hope so are they. We're going to uh, look for a good second half. Wayne, have fun in the second half. All right, thank you very much. Todd, back to you. Thank you very much, Tom. Yeah, I think the one team may be ahead on points right now. This has been a physical knock them down, drag them out sort of first half, Chuck. Well, Mariner is a big physical football team, and Capital certainly doesn't give any, give any ground up without a lot of effort. Yeah, these kids, remember, remember your high school days? Everything was life and death. Brian Reed set to kick off as we start the second half. It'll go to Burt Calder stepping in front of Washington. And he'll get out to around the 25-yard line. Mark Ingman was the first man to reach him for capital. And Mariner will have the football there after seeing their first half ending drive come to an end with a turnover. Teo Johnson leading the Marauders back out onto the field as we start the third quarter. And here's what Mariner did in the first half of play. One turnover and pretty good starting field position. A yeah, good field position, particularly on the, on the minus 15 yard drive that was after the turnover by capital they were unable to take advantage you of it you see 140 yards of offense on two drives got one score and turned the ball over the other time washington good lead blocking takes him out over the 30 yard line Leon Vu leading the tacklers along with Scott Barber for Capital. And that was a play there where Washington got well into the secondary before he was touched. Yeah, very well blocked by the inside people. The quick pitch to the outside. Washington caught it just straight up the field. That's what Mariner can do. What we saw in the first half was the yin and the yang of Mariner. They do some great things and then they do some things that break their own hearts. Darius Washington leads Mariner with better than seven and a half yards to carry. He's going left side this time. Nice stiff arm on O'Connor. Then finally some pursuit O'Connor coming back to help after Fulton got there and Alex Mondo. Hey, you heard Wayne Sartoon talk about how tenacious they are on defense. That's the example right there. Casey O'Connor comes up to make the play. He's given up 35 pounds to Darius Washington right here. It's 165 versus 200. 200 wins, but that 165 is about 155 pounds of heart. And O'Connor comes back and makes a play. We've talked about Capitals' discipline defense. We'll have to try to tell you an interesting story about O'Connor when we get a moment. First down for Mariner from the 37. Gordon's first carry of the half. He'll get about three more. Most guys are stopped at the line of scrimmage. He just leans forward to pick it up. Vu, Mondo, and Matt Tagman on the tackle for Capital. Vu yeah, right there. He's also a 165-pound linebacker. Their leading tackler at 165 pounds. As you see, Gordon, the leading rusher for Mariner tonight, making some things happen. But these guys for Capital, you know, they're giving up 65 pounds in many cases to Gordon. They're stepping right up there, going chest to chest. Washington in motion, collision, quarterback and running back hit each other, and it appears as though Mariner got it. 
think Washington and Johnson going to talk ball. about it a little yeah. bit. The ball laying at their feet after the collision. One guy thinks it's a reverse to the outside. The other guy thinks it's a counter to the inside. Johnson alertly. It was nearly disaster. Gets the gets the turnover. The officials calling timeout again as we have another equipment adjustment. I want to go back to talk about Casey O'Connor for a minute now for Capital. Last week in their game, they had their opponents, Moses Lake, driving late. Moses Lake ran the old hook and ladder play. Now, most times you hope your guys stay disciplined enough to make the tackle. All Casey O'Connor did was step into the lateral, pick it off in midair, and go 55 yards for a touchdown. That's discipline. And not only is he in the right spot, but he's got the ability to make the play from that spot. That was their final score in the 49-28 win. Swin pass to Burkhalder, took his eyes off the ball with two defenders closing. Should we go over that fundamental thing about catch the ball first and then turn up field and run? Barber and Oust on the coverage was a good situation here for Burkholder with his speed to go against him. And he had the full speed going, full speed upfield, but you see right there, he's got one eye on the 20 and one eye on the 32 and nobody on the Wilson coming at him. <laughs> he's going to run out of eyeballs. Mariner, a man short on the punt team. Now they finally, John Undrzak was going to grab one player, another player, Keck, sprints out instead. Johnson gets the snap in time. I know that's the first side-over-side -side kick rather than end-over-end -end I've seen. Good wrap-up of Fulton and a solid tackle by Michael Aragon for Mariner. The ball will be at the 34-yard line for Capital after the punt by Teo Johnson. And a disappointing start that time for the second half for Mariner. They have the momentum with their outstanding drive before the close of the half. Wanted to come out and continue that momentum. This is a Mariner team that came back last week in the semis. They trailed Linden 14-13 at halftime. Came out in the second half and scored 22 consecutive points to go on and win their semifinal to get here tonight. Trigg on first down. He'll get about four yards as we take a look at Capitals possessions in the first half of play and they struck early after punting on their first possession they had a nice drive and then capitalized on the turnover you see the after capitalizing twice in a row getting touchdowns on two consecutive drives they kind of self-destructed and turned it over their next two drives they got to try to get something back on offense and they actually on average have had poorer starting position than mariner Again, Trigg up the middle. He'll be about a yard and a half short of the first down. Richie Ross leading the tacklers for Mariner along with Martavius Burkhalder. Mariner will bring in Damian Holman at 6'5", 260 on the third and short. Amon Gordon waving over the sideline, waiting for the defensive signals to be waved in. A little bit agitated there, waiting for the call. Capital needs to get it to about the 44 and a half. It's a long one here. Trigg, nice job by Burkhalter to shoot the gap, and they'll drop him in the backfield. Burkhalter, after making the play, grabs his knee. He's had a bad knee. Sprained his knee a couple of weeks ago in the Kennedy game. He's finally getting... And Washington is also slow to get up. He's still down on both knees. Now he pulls his way up, but Burkholder, as you mentioned, had been lost to this team. He's also very good from the running back position, averaging 6'8 to carry there and led them with 680 rushing yards. Great effort by Burkholder in the short yarded situation to get into the backfield. You see hurdles the pile right there to make the play, but right there, that left knee, I think, pops a little bit. He kind of gets caught in the pile. Some time that's how guys get hurt, not so much. Well, and scary too when you've just gone through it. He's going to be able to walk out under his own power. But when you've gone through that once, what thoughts go through a young man's mind just to feel the slightest twinge right there? Brian Reed on the punt. That's that's not Chuck, honest. <laughs> Washington and Collins back deep for Mariner, another low snap to read. The uh, Mariner coach is screaming fake, they're wrong. This bouncing kick will roll out of bounds at about the 26 yard line. Good field position again for Mariner there. 8-0 on the point in the third quarter. You're watching the WIAA Dairy Farmers of Washington Gridiron Classic.
Todd Pickett along with Chuck Nelson back at the Tacoma Dome. Capital leading Mariner 15-7 here in the third quarter. Chuck, we saw going to break Burkhalter coming back out onto the field. Good sign for Mariner. Good sign for Martavius Burkhalter. Missed a couple games. Half speed. You're not going to miss championship game your senior year. Washington, the power sweep left behind Gordon's block. Ball stripped away, but it rolls out of bounds. Fulton took it away from him. The coaches will give him a little uh, lecture while he's on their sideline. Well, and again, you get, a, you get a look at how Mariner can get you so high and then get you so low if you're a Marauder fan. First, you see Washington with the ball in the wrong hand on that inside arm instead of the outside arm. You can see Fulton, as Wayne Sartoon reminded us, they are, they are coached to do, get the ball out. They just put up some yards, but not getting it in the end zone often enough. Only the one touchdown, but you Gordon, can see the balance. Gordon's four-yard run. Burkholder carrying this time. Nice job of sliding down the line by Matt Tagman from the middle linebacker position. Alex Mondo also in on the stop, the strong backer. Salmon will come in for Keck at the wide receiver position and bring the play in as well. Call it a loss of one on that. Well, make it a gain of one, actually, on the play. They'll spot second and nine at the 41. Washington again in motion. Little confusion and a broken play turns into a pitch. And Washington's going to be swarmed under. Again, looked like uh, some miscommunication. Two players going two different directions in the Mariner backfield. Like a little much ado about nothing right there. Theo Johnson saying at the end, I'm not going to get hit, you take it. He's going to make himself dizzy, all the spinning around, a little half pump fake, and then Washington, if this was a design play, those two guys are too close together. One defender could defend them both, but it's not a design play. And, don't, don't try it again. And it puts Mariner in a third and long situation. They have not done well in the third and longs, which would normally be passing type situations. Johnson has some time. Keck with a grab, then knock loose. It'll be an incomplete pass. That young man nearly made an amazing possession catch at midfield. A good job of going up to get the ball. Shane Keck, the 5'11", 185-pound senior, the crossing route thrown high. But not the receiver's best friend, but Keck, fearless right here, went up in traffic. But a good job by Fulton of being there when he came down to get the ball out. And you said as well, it was a high pass. It also had enough taken off it that it allowed Capital to close defensively. We used to call those hospital balls. Fulton's going to try to make a grab. That should have been a flag, I thought, with the man interfering with the right to make a catch that time. They nearly picked the ball off before Fulton had a chance to catch it. I guess Salmon could have downed it, but Fulton was trying to make the grab. Capital will have the ball, and they will spot it at the 31-yard line. Northwest College coming your way Tuesday night at 7.30 here on Fox Sports Northwest. University of Washington moving out of conference to take on West Coast Conference and Northwest rival Gonzaga. You can catch all the action. That should be a great matchup. Tuesday at 7.30, the Dogs and the Dogs right here on Fox Sports Northwest. Doggy dog battle. <laughs> Trig flag thrown. Another flag thrown. This one's coming back. Mariners defense has been such a big part of their run to the state championship game. Their defense has really started picking it up after giving up the two touchdowns in the first quarter. Illegal procedure on White. Shot block on White. Okay. Well, Wayne Sortune's crew went 0 for 2 that time. Raiders lips. Shot block. Can't go low if the guy's got you somebody him blocking still. him high. Speaking of chop blocks, when I talked to Wayne Sortoon before the game this week, 
there's a player reserve on the capital roster by the name of Ben Davidson. And I said, hey, any relation? Jokingly, and Wayne said, you know, by the way, I played against Ben Davidson in a Husky alumni game. He said, I made the mistake of chop blocking him when Ben still had a career with the Raiders, and he really didn't take it too kindly. The longest day of his life yeah. <laughs> playing against an angry Ben Davidson. Huskies, for a long time, instead of having a spring inter-squad game, had the varsity play a group of alumni players. One year under Don James, they did that, and then Don said, I'm going to have both, I'm going to have my guys play. Yeah, can you imagine how many nervous agents that would make these days? That's before everybody was making a million bucks a year. <laughs> Sorry, coach, I can't play. I might lose an endorsement. They called Capital for illegally assisting the runner as well, went back and changed one of the penalties. And they'll wrap up Fulton on the inside handoff for little gain as well. Okay, that, that explains he gave the signal of pushing the guy along and then the call the chop block. He was later going backwards a long way and didn't get a whole lot right there on first down. See Mariner showing a little sophistication, going with a little kind of nickel package here. Ronnie Harrell coming in, more of a coverage man, replacing Anthony Portillo, who plays the run. It looked as though two men moved that time at the same time for Capital, but there's no flag on the scramble. Tipped and intercepted by Burkholder. He'll have it at the 23. Third turnover for a normally solid ca uh, Capital team. So we talked a lot about how efficient Tabor Lee is. That's his eighth interception of the year versus 17 touchdowns, excuse me, 10th interception, 8th interception of the year. He's got a great ratio of touchdowns to interceptions, but field position right here, this is an opportunity, the opportunity for Mariner to get well in a hurry. Can this be their break this time? They haven't capitalized in the past. Gordon. He'll take it for about three down to the 20. Wrapped up by Bellis, along with Dan Kane and Skyler Fulton. Kind of like to see Mariner go back to that urgent offense that they ran at the end of the first half where they were doing things in a hurry. You can see they've had their chances here tonight, winning the turnover battle three to one. This is the second one deep in capital territory. Washington has some lead blocking from Gordon. He'll take it to about the 16-yard line. Came there among the tacklers once again for Capital, along with Luca Vidalich, the guy Wayne Sortoon says is really their blue-collar guy at 5'10", 208, and a junior. They get him back again next year. Capital capitalized on the Mariner turnover in the first half, but the Marauders have not done anything when the Cougars have handed them the ball. Again, if you join this late, Capitals two touchdowns came two minutes apart in the first quarter. Johnson trying to bootleg. Now throws, open man. Nice comeback catch by Robbie Salmon. First and goal for Mariner. Great job that time by Johnson of getting outside and keeping his eyes downfield, not trying to make the play himself, and then throw the ball on a rope, and Salmon coming back upstream to make the catch. This is what I say. This is where he's at his best when he's on the move and creating. Well, for a big guy, obviously, he moves very, very well. Structure doesn't necessarily fit and take advantage of his athleticism. You can see the enthusiasm of making a play in the state championship game. He's a confident young man. He said last week, he told me after the game, we knew we could come back. Washington, touchdown, Mariner. Just a well-blocked running play. Let the big guys do what the big guys can do. And Washington, knowing he doesn't have to chuck and jive and make a big play, just run straight ahead full speed. You don't have that far to go. Just find some blue paint. And Chuck, the Marauders are going to go for two and the tie right here. Still time for Teo. He's going to try and vault it again. He did it last week for a score, but he's unsuccessful this time. 
pretty good coverage by Capital as all the receivers were covered. I thought Teo could have taken it up the middle and in for the score. Well, I think this is a situation, too, Todd, where they tried to create what you were talking about, trying to create a situation where everything kind of breaks down and just let Teo be the athlete that he is. This time it didn't work as Capital comes up with the play. Washington with the touchdown, but Johnson unable to get the conversion over. Capital hangs on. They lead it by two. Back at the Tacoma Dome, Capital leading Mariner 15 to 13 as the Marauders do capitalize on the turnover. Isaac Woldite set to kick off. And a diamond return this time for Capital. They really have four guys back in position. It'll come to the most dangerous of them, Fulton. He drops it again. Look out. Has room. The kicker to beat. And he could go all the way. What a big break for Capital. 94 yards. Skyler Fulton. Touchdown. Cougars. No flags on the play. This is why this young man is so dangerous. 17th, 18th touchdown of the season. His second kickoff return for a touchdown. He can make it happen so many ways. So many times when the ball is bobbled, it draws everybody in and you can pop it. And Fulton doesn't really have to make any moves. Just make the read and open up. This is and a, that's how you answer a Mariner touchdown. A record in the championship, 96 yards officially breaking the mark of former Seahawk Paul Scancy, who did it for Peninsula against Pullman, 89 yards all the way back in 1978. 96 for Fulton, point after touchdown by Brian Reed is good. And boy, oh boy, is that a big one right there for Capital, including the PAT. It makes it nine now for them, but Fulton puts momentum back on the side of the Cougars with his 96-yard kickoff return. Capital 22, Mariner 13. Skyler Fulton with a record 96-yard kickoff return for the touchdown gives Capital a nine-point lead. Mariner feeling so good about themselves after scoring to pull within two. And Chuck, how many times do you see that bobbled ball create a lane sometimes for a return man? Well, oftentimes the coverage team will either let up or converge at the spot and not really stay in their lanes. Just kind of disrupts That's the, the coverage team as well as the return team and an athlete can make something happen. Reed to kick off. Washington will see if he tries to make something happen right here for the Marauders. Still in. He'll take it out over the 35-yard line. Kurt Prager on the tackle for Capital, along with Jeff Washburn. And there once again is Skyler Fulton, the six-foot junior. That is a record for any classification in the WIAA. Yeah, Skyler Fulton just dangerous with the ball in his hands once he gets it in his hands. And again, this is just a speed issue. Evade the first guy and then get into your stride. John Andrzejczyk, the coach of Mariner, again, worked extra on special teams this week. He knew special teams was going to be a big part of this football game. He just wanted to see some of the plays made by the guys in blue. Third kickoff return for a touchdown this year for Fulton. Burkholder carries on first down for Mariner. Right here, John Andrzejczyk has to take his kids, Chuck, and just say, okay, there's still plenty of time. We got more than a full quarter to go, and we don't need more than a touchdown and a field goal to win it. Yeah, we scored on our last drive. We're not going to score a nine-point touchdown in one play anyway. Let's do what we can do, grind it out, make something happen. We're still alive. Gordon cut it back inside. Good job by Tagman to deny him the corner, and then Dan Kane led the tacklers for capital. Look at how quick... Amon Gordon can be, though, for a guy that's 6'4", 238 pounds, cutting that thing upfield. Skyler Fulton, one of those guys that never leaves the field. Offense, defense, special teams. Again, only a junior, 6'175 pounder, 18 touchdowns this season. And the four different ways. The most valuable player in the Three Rivers League, as well as an all-state selection. Five different ways. Got an interception return, too. 
Trying to set up the screen for Gordon. He's got good lead blocking. First down into Capital Territory, 43-yard line. Well-designed play by the Marauders. Yeah, they get a little misdirection going the other way and get a 240-pounder out in the open field, turning the Tacoma Dome into the Thunderdome. It sounded like those scenes in Jurassic Park where the camera would shake. <laughs> John Andrzejczyk knows that he's got a horse to ride in number one. Saddle him up. Bus has already taken as a nickname. I don't know what else but the number one express. This guy is tough to bring down. And he's back again. They get the counter right this time for Washington. He could be gone. One quick block and he's into the end zone. 43-yard touchdown run. Darius Washington is the 11th touchdown of the year, second in this quarter. A game of one-upsmanship coming on here late in the third quarter. Anything you can do, I can do better. And Darius Washington takes the inside counter from his wing position. And just like Fulton on the kickoff, evades one guy and then goes into track mode. Number nine goes for six. Isaac Woldite on to attempt the point after. Chris Miles is the holder, Richie Ross the snapper. And we are back to a two-point ball game. 22 to 20, Chuck, that's three touchdowns in two minutes and 10 seconds. If I didn't know better, I think we had the BA game going on. Well, they're gonna put a few points up on the, on the scoreboard when you've got athletes like we've got in this championship game tonight. Those are the kind of things that can happen. Skyler Fulton making it happen for Capital, and the Mariner fans happy that they've got guys doing it in blue. Darius Washington with his second touchdown of the night. Again, it's the misdirection. You see Gordon up front occupies, occupies a few people, draws those inside guys, the inside linebackers, to him. Ball's going the other way, though, in Washington's hands. Josh Catway with a nice kick-out block as well. And we talked about two great defensive teams. Capital gives up 11.8 points per game. Mariner gives up 11.2. And all of a sudden, we're in the 20s. I think the offensive coaches must have made the better adjustments at halftime. Well, they also, they're getting what they're doing is doing a good job of getting the ball in the hands of the guys that can make plays. And Mariner's got a bunch of them. If you're John Underzak, <laughs> where do you want to kick this time? Anywhere but 21. You may see the ball on the ground again. You may see a high short kick. Remember, Woldite tried one line driver that hit the up backs and could have been a Mariner ball, except the Marauders were offside on the kick. Woldite also a junior. He's got a pretty good leg. Both kickers do in this game, and they go to the safety kickoff this time. Big bounce for Barber, who can also run well. They get him across on the return, and he's out almost to the 40-yard line. It's a great field position again for Capital. Barber, one of the up men in the formation. He's usually a blocker in that formation. He gets a penalty. On a kickoff return, could you say the barber clipped? <laughs> that time the barber got some good field position for his capital offense. Trig the workhorse in the middle. He'll get a couple. Burke Halder on the stop for the Marauders. Guys going both ways. Lots of high school teams do. If you've got an athlete like Burkhalder, you certainly want to leave him out there. Mariner ran inside, down the halls, down the concourses of their athletic complex this week to get used to being inside and trying to be fatigued. Condition inside to get used for this, get used to the dome. That incomplete pass to Fulton. You've played both ways. Explain what it is. What's particular to a dome that makes it tougher on a player? Well, it's just the air is kind of stagnant. It's kind of, it's like, not like a sauna in that it's hot, but you just don't, it's not fresh air. There's not a lot of recirculation re going on. Everything so, just kind of feels kind of stuffy. So in other words, it's like playing a road game at SC or UCLA. Well, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Trying to find Fulton on the slip screen, goes through his hands, nearly intercepted. Gordon was there on the coverage as well. 
That throw just a little bit high from Tabor Lee, partially because he had some marauders marauding in his face. He's only five foot eleven. When you got guys like six seven Tao Johnson who by design are coming through to pressure you on the screen, you're gonna have to get it over the top and Fulton couldn't sky quite high enough to bring that down, which is a shame for Capital. That play was well set up. High snap fielded nicely by Brian Reed off the side of his foot, and it's going to be caught in the air. Not a bad athletic play there by Dan Kane. Near midfield and great field position for Mariner. Mariner's starting to tilt the field their way a little bit. When you've got size like Mariner, you can wear down the opponent. You heard Wayne Sartoon at halftime talk a little bit about his team getting beat up. That's because they're giving up 50 pounds per man to these big Mariner players. In the fourth quarter, that size, that bulk starts to take its toll on the other team. If you're a grind them out team like Mariner, you've got a quarterback that's got a lot of bulk, too. Teo Johnson, a very athletic family, Two older brothers both played Pac-10 football. Amani played at Oregon State. We all now Again, down those, at Stanford. Those three scores came in a span of two minutes and 10 seconds. We've just been wasting time since then. Burke Holder over midfield and into capital territory. Vu on the tackle along with Kane and Carlisle. Gain a three on that one. And we have come to the end of three quarters here at the Tacoma Dome in an exciting third quarter this one has been. Scoring galore, offense up and down the field, a couple of long plays, and we will go to the fourth quarter of this championship game. Darius Washington with two touchdowns in the third quarter. Skylar Fulton with a 96-yard kickoff return in between. We go to the fourth quarter. Capital leading Mariner by two. You're watching the WIAA Dairy Farmers of Washington Gridiron Classic. Welcome back, start of the fourth quarter at the Tacoma Dome. A lot of scoring in the third. Mariner with the ball once again. Big hole for Gordon. First down yardage for Mariner as he's brought down at the Capitol 40 yard line. He can get through the holes in a hurry. It's a great first step for a guy that's almost 240 pounds. When you line up fairly close to the line of scrimmage from that fullback position, you get a little crease. Get that 240 going forward. You're going to pick up first downs. Burke Holder, room off the left side. Vinovich sliding off to make the tackle, along with Jesse Ost. Looked as though Burke Holder was going to get in the clear, and Vinovich all of a sudden popped free and dragged him down. Nice job by Vinovich of making the initial hit, and then Jesse Ost coming in to deliver the second blow. Second man in is the one that gets the free shot. But bottom line is that's a good gain on first down for Mariner. And those big guys up front, like Damon Holman you're looking at, is making things happen. Mariner with the advantage in total offense now. You remember how close things were at halftime. It's Mariner that came out in the third quarter. Capital had 155 at the half, so they had just eight yards of total offense in the third quarter. Gordon right side bouncing off of tacklers down to the 23-yard line. And another first down for Mariner. Remember, this guy weighs 240 pounds, and he's playing against the defense whose biggest man is 205. They got two guys at 205. Everybody else is under 200. And when he gets into that open field, I mean, how many 240-pound fullbacks do you run quick pitches to? You get him out in the open field right there. Scott Barber is giving up 70 pounds to this guy. Gordon closing in on 100 now. He'll get that and more. Inside the 15-yard line, close to first down yardage again, depending on where they spot it. Oust and Carlisle on the tackle, but he's getting into the secondary before anyone gets near him. Yeah, that's because the big guys up front are making things happen. Wayne Sartoon's got to try to find a way to get his little guys 
to stop that steamroller. Kelly Fee, the big left tackle, 250 pounder for Mariner. Making John Andrzejczyk happy with the way he's moving people out. About a half yard short of the first down. Call it the 14. Gordon again, first down, Mariner. To get those nine yards on first down, make second down pretty simple when you got horses like the Mariner Marauders. Vitalich and Alex Mondo on the tackle. Mariner now over their per game rushing average. And they, tonight, Chuck, have just seen to do it in chunks. When they click, they click. Again, that's kind of been their mode all season long. They can look very good, and it's kind of been self-destruction when then bad things happen. It seems to be their own fall all year long. Burke Halder, ball's loose. Looks as though Mariner fell on it. They're going to have a wrestling match, but they'll lose it, Will Capital. Josh Catway, the guy who had the ball bounce into his hands. That's, I think of Josh Catway at 240 as wrestling Scott Barber at 170 in, in any format. It's Josh Catway that's going to come up with the play, but as I was just saying, it's Mariner that has hurt themselves when things have gone wrong. That's just Martavius Burkhalter not putting the ball away. Alex Mondo slapping it away for Capital. You get that one little kind of weak hand in there like that. That shouldn't put the ball on the ground. Catway, cat quick to make the recovery. And maybe a big saver right there by Catway. Burkhalter bounces backward and then gets dropped. Barber on the tackle along with Carlisle. They'll bring up a third and about six. Now this is great, though. Just the emotion of high school football. Everybody on the Mariner side of the field standing up, clapping, jumping up and down. Everybody on the Capitol side now of the field. Now they come to their feet. Starting to respond, but they're sitting over there biting their fingernails in this drive. Now they're trying to make things Mariner, go better. Mariner can get a first down inside the one. Ball's loose again. Capitol has it. Jared Trigg falls on it, and again, Mariner shoots itself in the foot in the red zone. Well, that was both barrels, and if you've ever had your foot shot in the red zone, you know how much that can hurt. A Just a pitch that goes awry from the quarterback. Another big turnover. Mariner has tossed it away twice when they've been in scoring position. Capital has the ball when we come back. Midway part of the fourth quarter, Capital with a turnover, has the ball. 19 yard line. Trigg, the man who fell on it in the backfield. Carlisle, big hit there. Out about the 22-23. Gordon there along with Josh Catway and they buried the 5'7 sophomore. Nice first down gain, though, before the shovels came out and the dirt went down on Carlisle. Just a simple, sweet play, well blocked there, turn it upfield, hit, hit the blue wall. The, the Mariner wave came down. They'll take it again, though. Tough guy, flag thrown for a hold, it looks like, against Capital. Capital is gauged by those. Only eight yards in the third quarter. Really got to find a way to run some clock here. Kill some clock and get some field position back. And big penalties on your team is not the way to do it. Of course, we should know, too, that on one drive that turned into a score, Capital never snapped the ball at all. Of course, Fulton going 96 for the score. So the offense not out on the field as much during that third quarter. But still, they did very, very little. it off against Capital, spot it back inside the 13-yard line now. Talk about the pageantry of high school football. Mariners got a Burke away suited mascot that has actual water coming out of its spout. Trying to go long here for O'Connor. He has it. Will he be able to get caught by Collins or not? Touchdown, Capital. 87 yards. 
the big play offense strikes again and Chuck much like the pass we saw earlier in the game Lee put just the right touch on it to beat Collins pursuit angle yeah, Collins is in position to make the play but he just can't get to the football receivers are taught to run and put your arms out at the last minute because you don't want to slow yourself down. Look at Collins. He's got his head back. He's watching the ball kind of running sideways. And when you got a guy, one guy running forward and one guy running sideways, the guy running forward is going to win. And in this case, it's the, Casey O'Connor. The first receiving touchdown all season for the son of the Capitol High School principal. Longest scoring play of the year for the Cougars goes 87 yards. Brian Reed with the point after, and Capitol puts another tally on the board. O'Connor with a long pass play. It's 29-20, Capitol out in front. Tabor Lee's pass to Casey O'Connor, 87 yards, the longest passing play, the longest touchdown pass in state championship finals at any classification. So a couple of marks for these Capital Cougars tonight. And again, they get a little bit of breathing room, but there's still better than seven minutes to play for Mariner. Mariner obviously has the capability of making big plays on their own. They've done it here tonight. They've done it all year long. Capitals not sitting there biting their fingernails anymore. They're feeling a little bit better. Into the corner, Collins takes it at the 11. Coaches upstairs behind us are screaming both hands as he turns upfield. Vu drops him at the 35-yard line. Mariner will have possession there. Close back in 1978, a fella out of Peninsula High School. It was a fairly new school then. Ran a kickback 89 yards and broke the hearts of the Pullman Greyhounds. What makes it worse was I was doing the game on radio for Pullman, and the guy between us here, Paul Scancy, was the guy who ran it back. You just watched Skylar Fulton go 96. What memories did that bring back? Well, that was an awesome, awesome uh, return right there. A uh, lot of great memories. Uh, that was up in the King Dome, state championship games, and uh, it, records are made to be broken. What do you remember about that game with Pullman? Just a back and forth game the whole way. Uh, you know, we were up, uh, actually we were down most of the time until the last uh, last quarter. And then we ended up getting back on them, uh, returning a kickoff uh, 89 yards on that one to go up on them by uh, one point. We'll seesaw game. Remember uh, Pat Beach, uh, the former WSU and, and uh, NFL tight end, was a key player on that Pullman team. And that happened fairly late in the game, too, if I remember right, didn't it? I think there was probably about four or five minutes left in the game. Well, Peninsula had gone to the championship game as Paul Scanzi's junior year, back to winning his senior year. Touchdown pass there, or uh, excuse me, a first down pass to uh, Portillo. Let's get caught up a little bit. Tell folks what you're up to these days. Well, I've uh, been over in Idaho for the past four years coaching and uh, coaching the wide receivers over there and uh, just out here watching the, watching the state championship final games. Idaho having a, a pretty good season, Paul. You win the Big West Championship. You're, you're a bull-bound football coach. A great, a great season. Got to got to teach them how to catch passes on blue turf again now, though, right? That's and the you, had that, you had that great overtime game for folks who didn't see it. Tell us about that winning two-point play again uh, that got you the conference championship in overtime against Boise. Oh, that was just a gutsy call by our head coach, and uh, you know it was, you know it was overtime game. We went down, and, and they called timeout. You know, right at the end, we were going to go kick it and go into two overtimes, and uh, so it kind of put in a little extra strategy involved there, and they didn't have any timeouts, and we ran our uh, two-point uh, team on, and. And uh, Joel Thomas has been big for us every year, and uh, or every game, he took it in for us, and do or die. Quickly, have you guys heard anything about a possible opponent yet for your game? Yeah, we're going to play Southern Miss. 7-14, uh, excellent team. Yeah, Idaho not only beats their arch rival Boise State, but wins the conference championship. Got to go back. Same bowl game, going down the humanitarian bowl in Boise. That's, congratulations. That's great. Thanks, Chuck. Paul, thanks for coming by. Good luck on that Smurf turf again, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you and the Vandals in action. All right. Thank you very much. Paul Scancy, 
Well, one more name out of the record books there was Skyler Fulton's 96-yard return. And back to action here as Burkholder carries on the left side for Mariner. Paul undoubtedly here at his recruiting duties for Paul the University of Idaho. So, yeah. Not looking at any of these players potentially. Couldn't be. Got, Couldn't be. got a few bodies here that might be able to play a little Big West football. Paul, a great teammate of mine at the University of Washington, too. A very good NFL career. A couple more of his records broken. His Husky records this year. Freshman receiving records that went down to Chris Jurgens a little bit. Skyler Fulton making some records of his own. That's nice all-purpose totals. Pretty there. good APY right there. 162 to be exact and two touchdowns. But sorry, he's got another year to go, guys. You get an early look at him. But Burke Holder down near the 30-yard line, swarmed under there by the capital defense. Barber on the tackle along with Kane. Five minutes to go. Mariner thinking about urgent urgency a little bit here. They do need to score twice. Down by nine. Can't wait too long to put more points on the board. Gordon protecting the ball well. Gets the first down inside the 25-yard line and picking himself back up off the turf. Nick Bellis after bringing the big man down again. Yeah, this is the kind of offense that they ran at the end of the first half with great success. In the huddle, out of the huddle, doing things in a hurry. John Andrzejczyk lighting that fire under his offense and Theo Johnson's the man with the match. Gordon now 120 yards, adds to that. Vitalich makes an arm tackle on him and is shaken up after he brought Gordon down. I think he left a little bit of that arm with Ahmed Jordan right there. Vitalich is gonna stay in. Wayne Sortu calls him our blue collar kid. And he's hanging tough right now. Six more yards for Gordon on that carry. Another power run off the left side. Alex Mondo leading the capital tacklers. They are gang tackling right now. As Teo Johnson's trying to get his guys lined up in a hurry and off the pile in a hurry, Wayne Sartoon is telling his guys, lay down, don't hurry up. That's their business. When you make the tackle, you're not in any hurry to get up. Make those guys run some clock. Vitalich comes out now. Tagman back in at that middle linebacker spot. Burkhalder wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage by Tagman, who just came back in. Yeah, fresh John, legs right there coming in to make the play. Johnson calls for a timeout now, and it's a fourth down situation for Mariner. They tried to sprint that one in on third and short, and a big defensive play by Tagman. A key fourth down for Mariner. If they're to keep any hopes alive, it'll come up right after this timeout. Fox Sports Northwest presents the WIAA Dairy Farmers of Washington Gridiron Classic. Tonight's Class 3A Football Championship brought to you by Car Toys, a better way to go for car stereos, car alarms, radar pagers, and cell phones. Fox Sports Northwest presents the WIAA Dairy Farmers of Washington Gridiron Classic. Tonight's Class 3A Football Championship brought to you by Car Toys, a better way to go for car stereos, car alarms, radar pagers, and cell phones. By the Money Tree, your cash solution, and by Emerald Queen Casino, where winners go to play. Back at the Dome, fourth down, two to go, a short two for the Mariner Marauders. They need to get inside the nine-yard line. Make it, excuse me, inside the 14-yard line, close to the 13. Johnson on a bootleg. Going to be close. He tried to run over the tackler. It'll be very close. Mark Ingman on the stop. Johnson says he has the first down. If they leave the ball where he put it down, it would be a first down, but it's very, very close. Much like the touchdown last week where Johnson got outside and then hurdled the player to get into the end zone for the touchdown. And the same kind of play, play fake underneath and let your biggest fast guy get outside. But he made that play closer than it needed to be. I thought if he'd have lowered his shoulder and just used that 228, he'd have been breathing a little bit easier. And you see how close it is, maybe three or four inches on that play. There are times when a player has to try to make a big play, make a wiggle and get the big yardage, and there are times that, like fourth and one where when you can see that yardage marker dead ahead, just lower your shoulders and go. 
Capital looking for its second state title in three years. Mariner looking for its first crown. Johnson, Salmon, at the 10, wrapped up solidly right there by Scott Barber. Barber wrapped Salmon right there. Good close by the 5'11", 170-pound junior and a good sure tackle. And again, Mariner taking a long time when you need two scores to try to get the ball in the end zone. Haven't thrown it in there yet. Well, after turning it over twice down here, they may want to do it right. Washington cutting back, gets inside the 10. O'Connor forced him down there. If you haven't had enough excitement so far tonight, don't forget, we'll be back here tomorrow night. Line it up and do it all over again. Pasco and Wilson High of Tacoma, pregame at 7. Our kickoff at 7.30 right here on Fox Sports Northwest. Yes, Washington's got a couple touchdowns. He's looking for another. The Capitol fans looking for the stop. Third and five, they run the short plunge to Gordon, and they're going to be short again. And they've called for another timeout. They're also using up the timeouts they might need in a final closing drive. Third and five, and they try to run the quick hitter inside and pop it for the first down. Not a real sophisticated passing game by John Andres' ex offense. And so in situations when they're behind like this, they're somewhat limited in what they can do. They're very good at what they do. Just don't do a lot of things. This one's going to be fourth down and about a yard to go for Mariner when we come back to action. Capital got on the board first in this contest. The Cougars with a touchdown pass from Lee to Fulton at 535 of the first quarter. They added the two-point conversion. Then after a Mariner fumble, Lee to Kane. That at 348 of the first quarter. It was 15-0 at the end of one. Gordon's four-yard run kept a long drive to make it 15-7. That was our halftime score. Washington in the end zone in the third. Fulton then took the next kick and went 96. Washington went on the 43-yard run to make it 22-20. And then Lee hit O'Connor to make it 29-20. We're back to action now. Fourth down and a yard to go for Mariner. Washington spinning, gets hit low. Got knocked down, they spot it at the three. That should be enough for the first down. He got a pretty favorable spot on that one as well. Barber thought it should have been further back. A great spin off the pile from Washington, knowing he's got to keep this play alive. Good job at the point of attack. Mac Tagman in particular, and Barber closed well and made a good tackle you on the spin. You see where he's knocked down, though. He's down at about the four. He really got a favorable spot on that one from the officials. It's a first and goal for Mariner. Just over two minutes to go. Two fourth down conversions in the drive, but again, the clock continues to run. Gordon, touchdown Mariner. Trailing by three, they will just kick the extra point, try to get the one. Undoubtedly then go for the onside with two minutes to go. A couple of coaches with the wheels spinning right now. It was imperative after getting the first down on the fourth and one that Mariner, because of time consideration, score on their first play. First play, first man. Amon Gordon, number one, just a big ball into the end zone. Isaac Woldite, the point after touchdown is good. They can win it with a field goal. Woldite has kicked a 43-yarder in the playoffs against Olympia. 2-0-1 still to play in the fourth quarter. And Woldite, the junior kicker, will now get his instructions from John Andrzejczyk and head back out with the kicking team. Undoubtedly, Wayne Sartoon will answer with his hands team, his onside kick return team. Gordon with two touchdown runs tonight. This one is 10th of the year. Two from Gordon, two from Washington. Again, just well blocked up front when you've got a guy with that size and that speed that only needs a couple yards. You don't need to do a whole lot. Just go straight ahead. 
Before the kickoff, don't forget weeknights at 7, Fox Sports Northwest tonight. All the sports news and features on coaches, athletes, and others around the region. Everything you want to know about what's happening in Pacific Northwest sports, including prep profiles on Wednesday nights. Fox Sports Northwest tonight, weeknights at 7, right here on Fox Sports Northwest. Well, you can tell the hands team is on. They've got Barber, Carlisle, and O'Connor up amongst the front guys well, for got, Capital. You got 10 guys within 15 yards of that midfield restraining line, and they all got little numbers or big numbers. Not a lot of blockers in there, just a bunch of guys that are supposed to be able to catch a wiggly football. Goldite's got it teed up on the left hash to come to the right. Got the bounce off O'Connor, fallen on by Capital. Mariner had the opportunity, the high bounce grabbed by Barber, and the Cougars get another big break. Yeah, the close shave by Barber right there, and a great kick from Waldite. The ball acted just like you want to make it act. Look at the reaction of John Andruzak. Just the way you want to diagram it, and they can't get it. He knows that the opportunity was created, but not taken advantage of. You see the tough bounce right there off the forehead of O'Connor and then the mad scramble begins and it's just it's just hustle and luck right here and Capital comes up with both. You don't think everybody's into this football game? One He's never been here before either. One first down should be enough for Capital. Keep in mind Mariner has one timeout left. They used two on the last drive. Burkhalter with the defensive play as he drops Lee. Great timing right then and the snap by Burkhalter. Capital ought to run a long count to try to slow down that Mariner sprint team that's going to come and try to make big plays. Before we wrap up tonight, again, congratulations to the Irish of DeSales, Walla Walla. Before we came on our first game today, the Class B-11 final, it was DeSales with the victory over Orcas Island, 48-28. Record-setting quarterback Brian Lindgren with six touchdown passes as the Irish win their second straight B-11 title. Capital taking their time in the huddle, and there's the long count. There's the long count. Make Mariner slow down. Capital in no hurry to get to the line of scrimmage, and then once they're there, don't let Mariner try to time the snap. Good call right there by the Cougars. Teo Johnson and teammates staring up at the clock at the scoreboard. They're short on points and running out of seconds. They think attack on the football right here, too. Obviously, the turnover is necessary. The clock starts after the penalty. Minutes to go. Trig left side. First down for Capital. That should be enough. Salmon wrapped him up around the ankles, but Trig takes it to the 30-yard line inside the final minute. The Cougars are starting to feel it, but it has not been an easy one for them today. Our Dairy Farmers of Washington player of the game, Skylar Fulton, with a state championship record at all classifications. This 96-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. And Chuck, it really was a momentum breaker right after Mariner got back within two. Mariner scored to pull within two, missed the two-point conversion, had the momentum on their side. Fulton grabbed it back. Also received a touchdown past the first score of the night for the Cougars, so he has two tallies. Timeout taken now by Mariner. That is their final timeout of the ball game. With 33 seconds left, it's a moot point. Capital just needs to snap it one more time. Heartbreak for Mariner. We talked about them as a senior-dominated team. Start eight seniors on offense, nine on defense. This may have been their only chance. They bring back some pretty good players, Amon Gordon and Theo Johnson, both back on the offensive side of the ball. Capital, two championships potentially in three years. A little bit younger, seven seniors on defense and only four seniors starting on offense. Again, you got to give this year's Mariner team a lot of credit. They've won only one playoff game ever at either the 4A or 3A level before coming into this playoff season. Two-time West Coast champions, and they got all the way to the championship game in 1998. Turnovers killed them in the end. 
Capital in the victory formation with Skylar Fulton back. Just snap it, take the knee, Tabor Lee. Take your time to spot the ball. Travis, you haven't made it to the World Series yet, but Tabor's got a state championship under his belt, and the Capital Cougars are the state 3A champions for the second time in three years for Wayne Sortoon. The emotions of high school football. Thrill of victory and agony to defeat indeed. The emotion of four months of football season and hard work comes to a close. The 3A trophy is headed back to Olympia once again. Congratulations to the Capital Cougars on their state championship and congratulations as well to the Mariner Marauders in their first ever state final. They come up just two points short tonight against Capital. So for Tom Glasgow and Chuck Nelson, I'm Todd Pickett saying so long from the Tacoma Dome. Our final score in the 3A championship game, Capital 29, Mariner 27. Join us tomorrow night. It's the 4A championship game. Pasco, the fourth big nine team in five years to make it to the final, takes on Wilson of Tacoma. Our coverage begins at 7 with Fox Sports Northwest tonight. The kickoff is at 7.30. You've been watching the WIAA Dairy Farmers of Washington Gridiron Classic. Tonight's 3A championship game on Fox Sports Northwest, your regional home of Fox Sports Net. Stay tuned. Coming up next, Fox Sports News and Primetime. Till tomorrow night, so long from Tacoma.